Hey guys, uh, Dr. Gavin Lim, board certified laser dermatologist. Today we've got uh, Emil Hansen. <laughs> Emil's uh, visiting me uh, over the last uh, week and a bit, and we've been uh, talking a lot in regards to acne scar revision. And um, I feel honoured that he's come all the way to, to see me, and I've really learned a lot from the conversations which I've had with him. Yeah, it's an honour for me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Look, look, I think. Um, you know, in the context of scar revision, I presume there's not many uh, specialists throughout the world here yeah, with, with, I guess, uh, more insight uh, and experience that, I guess, wouldn't say that we are the best, yeah, but, but at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is convey what um, uh, the specialty means to us yeah, mm -hmm. as dermatologists uh, in the context of scar revision. Uh, so this whole topic is manual versus device, and mm -hmm. I'd like to know his thoughts on manual therapy such as subcision, peels, TCA cross, TCA peels compared to energy devices. Mm. So Emil, if you have to pick two modalities and two modalities only for generalized scarring, what, what would it be? So remember, I've given you everything from energy devices, whether it be lasers, ablative, non-ablative, fractional lasers, fully ablative, microneedling, RF microneedling, uh, high intensity focus ultrasound, list goes on and on. Yeah. But two procedures and two procedures only, what would you pick? Yeah. I would be about to say one would be my right hand and one would be my right hand. <laughs> I thoroughly agree with yeah, that. Yeah. But but I think that in, in, in regards to you know treatments, I would definitely I would I would I would pick subcision. Yeah. I think it's extremely 100%. extremely effective and uh, many many scars. I'd say most scars are to some degree tethered. Yes. And I constantly get surprised when I decide to subsize the scar even though that it, it, it's not it's not obviously uh, tethered yes but when I subsize it I, I get really surprised because I meet resistance absolutely that's what we want yeah and and, and then then I get this feeling when I scratch the skin from underneath from underneath I really think double I, scraping yeah. exactly yeah. double scraping I really I really get the idea that I stimulate the fibroblast to produce collagen and what I do see is that patients who return to me very rarely, maybe only one, once a year or every second year, they, some of them have only subsession done. And they do see, you know, constant, uh, gradual uh, improvement of their scars just one or two years even after the uh, procedure. Yeah. Uh, without any energy devices. Absolutely. So I really, I must say, I love subsession. I find it extremely effective and I find it really, really safe. Yes, absolutely. So before I ask him about the second, I'll give my thoughts on subcision. Mm -hmm. So, like Emil, that would be my first, yeah. And I think that over the past few years, we've gone from uh, basically needle, what I call point subcision, where you see something, you put a point, you do three little holes, uh, create some tunnels, do a windscreen wiper, uh, and hopefully you may hit the scar, you may not, yeah. So that's the, I guess, that was the first um, uh, type of subcision which was devised in 1995 by Ostensich, yeah? And I think that paper showed eight to 10 treatments for a modest improvement. Mm -hmm. Since then, we've had no core, mm -hmm. which is most frequently using the 18 gauge. Uh, and then Greg Goodman uh, reported the 18 gauge just using a, a beveled needle. Um, but now, I guess for the last three or four years, uh, I've nearly exclusively used cannula. Mm -hmm. yeah? What are your thoughts on that? I use it most of the times. So it's just you know for very very isolated scars that are highly fibrotic. Yes. I might have to change for the to, to no for the no yeah, core yeah, yeah, because yeah. sometimes you meet really really high Heart resistance. resistance. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I think the the cannula um, subcision and it's not just Emil and myself saying this. Yeah, if you look at the medical literature over the past uh, eighteen months, you see most uh, scar specialists would use cannula, mm. yeah. And the great thing with the cannula is that you've got finesse with it, you've got safety, yeah. because um, I guess you're pushing away and breaking the scars that way rather than cutting. Yeah. Uh, when you cut, I, I totally agree, if there's a fibrotic scar and I just can't move it, that's when I use my no core, yeah. yeah. But um, the subcision really pushes a lot of things away and you break down the actual scar. And, and you're able to inject for the cannula, which as, is absolutely. a major advantage as well, right? Absolutely, yeah. So. Um, with, with, you know, with a no-core, yes, you can inject as well, but realistically, the uh, length of the no-core is, uh, is short, yeah? so basically mm -hmm. you have to do many punctures, mm -hmm. which would increase your chances of uh, hematoma. Exactly, yeah? Yeah. So I think uh, subcision is, is my number one as well. Um, you know, I use everything from a 22 gauge all the way up to a 30 gauge. Yourself, have you got a preference with the brand? 
Uh, I, I very much like the TSK, the Japanese brand. I yeah. think it's very solid, very strong steel. Uh, absolutely. Some of the, the other brands they bend, tend to bend. bend yeah, 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 hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. That's why when we look at, um, I guess, with people who do a lot of cannula. Uh, we're not sponsored by TSK, by the way. We, we wish we were because uh, wine cannula costs about thirty-five bucks, and sometimes in a given session where someone's got bad acne scarring, will easily bend one. Uh, and just last week, I bent four in one session. Yeah. Wow, yeah. Uh, and that's using you know heelless steel with Japanese TSK. Um, they're super expensive, but like Emil says, you know, we can really get a lot of flexion with it. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on, I guess, the other instruments? So, I won't mention the, we shouldn't mention the surgeon's name, but the Liberator, yeah. Um, uh, how do you feel about that in the context of scar revision? To me, it looks a bit aggressive. Yes. Uh, and I would be worried about, you know, the risk of um, uh, tissue damage yes. and uh, hematoma bruising, yes. which is, um, well, it obviously, it must be a, there must be a higher risk of that. Yes, yes. I totally agree yeah, that, that it looks like a very aggressive treatment and in some patients that might be the best instrument. Yeah? So we're not saying that mm -hmm. it's not, it's just that in our everyday practice, we probably want something which provides a curve, especially when you're doing the cheek area. Mm -hmm. I know the flip side is that we can do multi multiple entry wounds uh, with, uh, with this device. Mm -hmm. However, I think, uh, like what you say, uh, the chance of a hematoma um, is higher. Yeah? One of the things I found with the cannula substitution is that it makes superior results, at least in my hands, yes, yes. if I use different entry points. A absolutely. So if I subsize, let's say, the cheek here, I need to go in from different angles because, you know, sometimes, you know, scar tissue would be like branches. In branches the, of a tree, tree. Yeah, exactly. 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 And you, could, you couldn't cut it from one angle or at least it seems like you cut it and then when you get in exactly in the same area from a different angle, then you can suddenly feel that there's feel that resistance. resistance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so I thoroughly agree with that. Yeah. Mm. And um, I think, like I said, the multiple entry points this has been confirmed in journals over the last 12 months, yeah, so it's not just what we're saying, it's mm -hmm. actually out there in the literature, mm -hmm. that multiple entry points, uh, preferably three, uh, in the context of bad scarring it is probably the way to go. Uh, certainly exceptions apply when you have things like um, mild to moderate scarring, modest, you can break up a lot of scars with one entry point, so we, we, yeah. we don't want to actually increase the chance of, uh, uh, I guess, side effects. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think it's important for patients to know the more aggressive we are with uh, cannula subcision or any form of subcision, uh, the greater the chance of, of side effects. Mm -hmm. And I think in, if you do have a basic understanding of anatomy, uh, we're not too worried about the arteries or, or the nerves because we know uh, the depth of that. Uh, what I guess we're worried about is, is uh, hematomas, yeah? yeah. Uh, with mm -hmm. that. And if we evacuate it, that's fine, but sometimes I see patients who've had lots of aggressive subcision without evacuation of hematomas and that's where you get lumps and bumps. Yeah? Exactly. Yeah. Cool. So let's get back to the topic. So the second thing, yeah, so remember you can have any device out there or your hands or anything out there. Yeah? What's your second? <sighs> I, have to, I, have to, I have to disappoint you in regards to, to energy devices because honestly I do think that the next treatment I would choose would, would be the good old TCA cross or TCA paint. Yeah. I really love it and I think it's, uh, you showed me an amazing new way of doing it. Oh, thanks. With, <laughs> with the pencil. With, with, with the, yeah, uh, brush it. I, the brush, yeah, yeah. I, I read about your, your new concept about the, the TCA paint instead yeah. of TCA cross <laughs> and uh, I, I found it really, really uh, amazing to see how you perform it. So that's definitely something I would bring back <laughs> to my patients. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for that. So Emil's been watching me, I guess, over the last uh, week or so yeah, in regards to how I do most of my sky revision. I love my lasers. Yeah, Basically, you have about four different types of CO2 lasers, ablated, non-ablated, everything from uh, auric microneedling with the Genius to, in, to Infini to heaps of other devices, but uh, as Emil will testify, most of my uh, things I start off with manual subcision and then uh, if the scars allow for it, trichloracy, the yeah, yeah. yeah. So I thoroughly agree, yeah, that's my two procedures with two methods, if I had to choose any, it would be that. Yeah. So, so basically you could start up, you know, a scar revision clinic on a very low budget. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, 100%, yeah. So if you know how, um, I guess, scars remodel and, and how they uh, and how they actually treat them 
you don't have to have an energy device. Um, the energy devices are there just as tools to get things done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because certainly if the scars are superficial, we're looking at things like uh, box scar scarring. And I had this discussion with Emil. So sorry to sidetrack you guys. Um, when we talk about box scar scarring, I gave you my thoughts on, on categorization of scars. Yeah, because when you look at the medical literature, people just go box scar scars, ice pick scars, rolling scars, atrophic scars, tethered scars, hypertrophic scars, pigmentation. I just, I guess, um, picked Emil's brains in regards to um, uh, the classification or reclassification or, or subcategories of, of scars. So we talked about things like box scar scarring, but you can have narrow, narrow box scar, uh, intermediate, broad box scar, and then you have the depth, yeah? mm. uh, shallow, medium, deep, and then I showed you even fibrotic, yeah? so fibrotic ones. So we can classify this, at least we classify it in, in, through our minds exactly what the scar is. Uh, yeah, and another point that we talked about is that scars change morphology. A absolutely, so remodel over time. It's a good point that you brought up because you really want to, you know, plan a treatment course for patients, and they you like can. to know yeah. how much downtime, what should I expect next next time. And then you try to make a treatment plan, and when the patient returns in, let's say, three months, you do something else. You do something <laughs> yeah, else because yeah, 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 yeah. scars scars have changed completely. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. So <clears throat> I'm guilty of this. Yeah. So when I was, uh, I guess, new in scar revision 10, 15 years ago. We used to have these big treatment plans that we call it synergy treatment plan where we, we go, cool, let's use this, 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 and this, and list it out for the patients and, you know, all packages, yeah, the laser packages, the RF packages for the patients, buy one, get one free type stuff, which you see a lot of clinics do. I digress, but um, basically it's this, uh, you're absolutely right, yeah, when it comes to scar revision, when my patients ask me, hey, uh, Dan, what are you going to do next? I say, look, I really don't know. It's not because I'm indecisive, yeah, it's because we need to see what works and how the scars remodel because you may treat, let's say, a broad box scar scar, for example, with a, a really light, uh, uh, I guess, either a laser when you're hitting the walls or something like a TCA paint tissue, TCA brush. You bring the patient back in, in three months' time and the scars shrunk down to something like a linear uh, box scar scar, which you can treat with a lot higher concentration of TCA because you've narrowed it down. And that's what we're seeing. That's what I guess is not talked about, is it, in, in the medical literature? Because I guess when we're doing scientific journals and papers, we can't go, well, you know what? Uh, six patients came in, we did this, and then three had remodeling, and then we did that. It's not a scientific study, yeah? Mm -hmm. and, and scars are basically uh, morphologically they can change. Mm -hmm. and, and so yeah. should our plan with the patient. Exactly. Yeah. Treat the scar type, right? Absolutely, yeah. yeah? And even with the scar type, like I said, you know, when we're trying to categorize things, in the literature we'll look at things like you know, ice pick scar, and everyone goes, oh, that's an ice pick scar. But what we do, what we see is that we see a continuum between you know, pores and large pores, pits and large pits, deeper pits, pick scars, ice pick scars, and the patient has a continuum of that. And same with the box scar scars. Yeah? So I showed you some pictures and we go, you know, is this a broad, is this narrow, is this deep? Uh, is it mixed? Is it fibrotic? Is it intermediate? You might have sides, you know, three, four sides are sharp. The other side may look like a, uh, a saucer scar. So all of these scars, you know, we, we want to categorize them. But I think biologically, what we see is basically a variation. Yeah, and it's very hard to actually put things in, in segregations and go, let's treat it this way, this way, this way, rigidly for the entire patient course. Mm -hmm. uh, that's when I think you, you, most patients would fail in the context of good scar revision. We probably have to be flexible, yeah? Exactly, yeah. Yeah, I, I like Emil's thought in regards to that. Mm -hmm. Guys, so look, uh, you know, Emil does uh, uh, lasers as well, yeah? So, so you know, if we can, we can pick, uh, at least I can pick his brains in regards to non-ablative lasers and, and other modalities. How do you find things in the comparison compared to, let's say, RF microneedling or, or, or fractional CO2 when we talk about the non-ablative wavelengths? So the fractal 1550, the 1440 type wavelengths. Do you have you much experience with that in the past? Um, sorry, don't know. The, the question was... was oh, the, the question is, how do you rate uh, the non-ablative lasers? Because I guess nowadays with uh, you know, social media and advertising, mm -hmm. you see a lot of clinics saying non-ablative yeah, lasers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I think, um, well, how should I... Uh, I think that... They, sorry, yeah, yeah. I think we, 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 what I'm about to say is, I think, I, think, I think that we're really struggling with marketing here. There's so much marketing yes, out yes. there. And, and, and non-ablative non -ablative laser is... Uh, you, you find it everywhere. It's the same with lasers in general. You find it everywhere. But what, is, what, what is a laser? There's so many different devices out there. 
and you know that with just you know minimal epidermal uh, delivery of energy, you won't you won't create a lot of you know dermal remodeling. Yeah, yeah. So, to yeah. some to some yeah. degree, but not much. In, in the context of uh, of acne scarring, I thoroughly agree. Yeah, because mm -hmm. we see this all the time marketing, especially for the new Pico devices. Mm -hmm. yeah? And uh, I was just telling Emil when I uh, did I guess read the paper when Pico sure first came out, and they compared that with a fractional CO two device mm -hmm. and. Uh, a very famous dermatologist plus his colleagues um, said it was uh, basically as effective as fractional mm -hmm. CO2. I find that very hard to believe yeah. in the context of uh, significant acne scars. We're mm -hmm. talking about scarring, not, not talking about PIH grade 1, grade 2 scars. Mm -hmm. We're talking about tethered atrophic scars, which are fibrosis. You can't have something which is, like you say, delivers the energy up in the epidermis, hopefully have cytokine release down the dermis to remodel collagen. It doesn't happen very often, mm -hmm. yeah. and, and we are struggling against marketing. Mm -hmm. um, and the non-ablative wavelengths, in the context of severe scarring, um, <sighs> I've limited success with it, yeah, uh, very limited. Mm -hmm. uh, so, not that I want to bash Fraxel, yeah, I love the 1927 Fraxel, the Thulium, the Diode with the Clear and Brilliant, uh, but when it comes to the Fraxel 1550 plus all the other wavelengths, you know, like 1440 type, 1450 type wavelengths, in my hands at least, um, I'm sure they're better dermatologists than I am, and, and the meal out there where, where you live, that may have better results than what we have, yeah, with non ablative but I thoroughly agree, yeah. I'd say the only thing I'd use it for in regards to, to scar revision would be for color changes, you know, yes. uh, pigmentation yeah, and pigment. redness, yeah. where it uh, yeah, uh, obviously absolutely. Way, but, but not for texture or... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. or 100% yeah. yeah. thoroughly agree. Guys, I hope you like that. This is just, I guess, uh, it's, it's really enjoying for me to actually have a colleague which I can bounce ideas off and, and, um, and you know, really enjoy your, your presence here, yeah? Oh, you too. <laughs> okay, guys, uh, let's uh, give it a break now. Uh, we'll, in the next couple of weeks, we'll talk about, I guess, part three, part four in regards to this video. Catch you then. Bye. Bye. Let's do uh, Cool. I should have said me too instead of you two. <laughs> no, 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 that, that's fine, that's okay, fine, that's okay, fine. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm so tired. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anything else you want to talk about? That, that, um, cool. Cool. That, that's great. Well done. Yeah.